we're getting nigh on to winter and we probably have another month or so before it'll get really cold here. We've had a couple of cool, cool nights. And I wanted to show you the rig that I use to feed my cattle some cubes uh, when it gets really, really cold. And um, I went to this particular rig um, primarily from a safety standpoint. When you're feeding cattle out of a bag and you're just taking a 55 pound bag and, and stringing the cubes out by hand, it can be very dangerous for the, for the person that's doing that. And the reason it is is because you get a mob of cattle around you trying to get the cubes and it's not that the cows close to you are going to hurt you, it's the cows at the back of the pack that are pushing the cows close to you in order to get cubes and so they push those cows into you and there are uh, several people that I know of that have been hurt pretty pretty dramatically from that and quite quite extensively so it only takes one time to get in a jam and obviously when you're out in the pasture all by yourself trying to feed cattle and that happens you can be in a real big pickle real quick so I went and um, got this particular feed system it's called a trip hopper it's made here in Texas you can see the contact information there and I can put it uh, down in the link below this particular system holds, holds 300 pounds of cubes and it has a removable top and you take that off I put the put the cubes in by hand out of 50 pound sacks and we'll show you how to do that and fill it up or whatever amount that you're going to feed. It's got a, uh, a setting inside this, con this compartment here where you can adjust the amount of, of cubes it's fed. And so I put out about four pounds each time this thing goes through a cycle. There's a conveyor belt in there, pulls those cubes into a hopper right here. And then there's a, a gear with a mechanism that it opens and closes this hopper so you'll you'll it the conveyor belt fills up the little hopper with four pounds and it trips it and then it dumps it, dumps it out on the ground so there's four pound pile you keep driving it dumps another four pound pile now the alternative would be there's a spring here you can take this spring off and when that spring is off, then it just rolls out in a continuous line. And that, I've done that as well. One thing that's interesting, once your cattle hear this and get used to it, when they hear that pop, they're going to come running. And it is a very nice mechanism to pin your cattle um, if, if you need to do it that way. So most of the time when I'm going to pin cows, I'm going to load up couple sacks of cubes, drive in the pin in that big wing that you can see in the previous video I made on my working pins, and put out a couple bags of cubes and those cattle just run in behind me and I drive around and close the gate. So it makes it easy from a cattle handling um, standpoint as well, but the big reason I did it 100% safety, plus it's just a lot easier to load it um, and then and then um, drive through the pasture and put out the cubes. So we'll show you how to load it. We'll show you putting out the cubes and something to consider depending on the size of your operation. Obviously, if you've got a big, big operation and you're putting out cubes, they make um, this same trip hopper on a big trailer. I think it'll hold 2,500 pounds of cubes. Um, and there's a lot of individuals in this part of the world that have those. Uh, trailer driven um, trip hoppers. Um, there's other models that other, other manufacturers make and you can look around on the internet and find most of those. Um, but safety is the key for me and then you know I, this is perfect for my operation. I fill this up it's going to feed these cattle just the amount they need when I need to um, and I don't have to make another trip back to the back to the barn. So something to consider it's it's really revolutionized my uh, feeding when I do feed and you got to put all that into account with your hay situation and 
we'll talk about that here in just a minute. warm you. That popping is that hopper filling and then tripping. They've got a they've got a special arm on the door that it goes through a cycle and then it pops and and puts out four pounds of cubes at a time. You can adjust it for less and maybe a little bit more, but I don't think it'll do much more than four pounds at a time. And so I just go in a straight line. I try to miss the cow manure. If you, if you put the cubes out in a pile of cow manure, the cows won't eat them, so they're all wasted. And so if I come back and forth and just go one line, turn around, come back the other way, go another line, then they don't have to run 100 yards to keep up with you if you go in a straight line. So I just keep zigzagging back and forth, and they just go from one, one line to the next line, and they can get their daily protein requirements. Typically, in the winter and again today is just a demonstration in preparation for winter time feeding but in the winter I'll typically feed them every other day sometimes depending on the warmth of the day I may feed every three or four days and sometimes I won't feed for quite some time depending on my hay and the protein content of my hay and if I think it's meeting my nutritional needs and again, testing your hay is really important so that you know um, there's a lot of times that if my hay quality is really good and the cattle are looking good and doing well, I won't feed them cubes and will go strictly off of the hay. And the beauty of that is it certainly decreases your cost. If I had plenty of winter forage, I wouldn't have to feed any hay, but I'm trying to get that started. And over time, I'll have winter forage, but boy, it's hard to do it all at one time. So you gotta grow a little bit at a time, depending on the depth of your pockets. But good quality hay is really, really important. So I try to get my hay from a very, very good hay dealer that's been in practice or been, been doing it for a lot of years and thankfully he's a client and he, he gives me um, excellent quality hay so I'm really pleased about that but there's a lot of forage out there it's going to start losing its protein content once the once we get a frost and so I really want to watch the condition of my cows particularly the if they're nursing calves, they're not going to do well without a little bit of nutritional support. If they're not nursing calves, if they're dry cows um, going to calve this spring, then they will do pretty well without a whole lot of outside inputs. But we just got to sort through that as we go. Now, when I hear the popper popping but no cubes coming out the roller there's a little gutter here that you have to manually clean out so you can 
use all the cubes that's in the tub or in the hopper. And so I'll just I'll just uh, scrape them to the bottom where they can fall into the conveyor belt, start the trip hopper again and and put those those cubes out. So I'm feeding a 20% breeders cube. It's a good quality feed made by our local producers cooperative, which is a really good farm and ranch store and feed mill. And that's what I do. So the big points on this video are safety and then ease of putting out cubes so these cows can get some nutrition when needed. So I'd really like to thank you for watching my channel and the support I've received. I've really enjoyed providing these videos for you. Um, everybody that ranches does things a little different. This is what works for my operation and hopefully if you see something that's helpful for your operation um, you can take that into account and mull that over. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, I would appreciate you hitting the like button and comment as you will. Thank you very much.